done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Welcome to American Agenda, everybody. I'm Bob Brooks. Katrina, did you miss me? I missed you so oh, much. I, I know, too. I know you all miss Bob too. But we're glad you're back. Good, good uh, weekend off. Great time. Or week off. With I should friends, say. with family, ready to go though for the sprint to She's the end. Ready here. to roll. Let's it's go. getting close. All right, and I am Katrina Zish. It is Monday. We're happy to have you with us. The discussions that Bob mentioned are said to have included how Kamala Harris could effectively distance herself from the president and what that could look like as Election Day approaches. That's right. The news of the campaign adjustment comes as Republicans pounded on her comments over the weekend, including Donald Trump himself, who replayed her response at his rallies. All right. Meanwhile, Axios is reporting that the relationship between the Harris and Biden teams has become increasingly tense in recent weeks as senior Biden aides are still struggling to adapt to a supporting role after the president was pushed out of the race in July. And we're learning the Democratic nominee is now facing new accusations of plagiarism over her 2009 book, Smart on Crime. Mm. All right, here with Reaction, President and Executive Editor at The Daily Signal, Rob Bluey. Rob, thanks so much for being with us here. Um, I'm going to start right with that plagiarism stuff because that is the new information coming in. Accusations against Kamala Harris for plagiarizing in her book. We know that President Biden was accused of plagiarizing back in 1987 in the primary debate, and even back in law school, which he has admitted. Uh, this doesn't go very far in making this party any more believable at this point, does it? That's a great question, Katrina, and you're absolutely right. This is not the kind of accusation that they need at this 11th hour as the final sprint to the finish is here upon us. Uh, any sort of distraction like this is a potential uh, nightmare for the, the Harris campaign, particularly at a time where she's still trying to get her footing and distinguish herself from Joe Biden. You're right. Joe Biden was plagued by plagiarism throughout his career. He was forced to drop out of that 19... 88 presidential campaign as a result of those accusations. And now for her to be facing those charges, uh, something that we've seen her tarnish the careers of people like Claudine Gay, the president of Harvard, not a good thing. We want to bring in the National Review editor, Rich Lowry, into the conversation. Rich, good to see you here. We're yes. learning that um, Kamala Harris's team is trying to figure out ways to distance herself after her disastrous interview on The View. She was asked, you know, would you do anything different? Nothing that comes into mind in terms of I've been a part of, yeah. of the decisions that have had to impact Kamala Harris. Joe Biden clearly have done it together. Not much difference. In her own words, what do you think of their strategy now? Well, it's getting awfully late to establish any separation from Joe Biden. I'm surprised she didn't seek some from the beginning. You know, when she was asked in a 60 Minutes interview by Bill Whitaker, you know, why do you guys toughen up at the border the first three years? She just could have said, well, I love Joe and I think he saved democracy, blah, blah, blah. But I do think he was too lax about this issue. She, she could do that on any number of things. There aren't Joe Biden loyalists out there. The Democratic Party isn't beholden to Joe Biden. She'll get all the latitude she needs. Instead, they decided to take this tack that she was part of every single important decision and she wholly supports it, which is not a great place to be when the incumbent president you've been serving is at 40 percent approval. You know, it's interesting, Rob, because, you you know, we were just talking about the plagiarism allegations against Kamala Harris. And then what Bob mentioned and what Rich said, you know, there's not that much time left. Again, mm -hmm. we've got 22 days till Election Day to sort of right these wrongs. We know that Kamala Harris is not doing as well as she was during sort of her Harris honeymoon when she first uh, was announced as the nominee. Um, do you think there's any chance that this campaign can get, I'll say, get back on track in time. Katrina, remember, people have already started voting in many states, including those crucial swing states. So in some cases, it may be uh, too little to too late. But yeah, I, I think that there's not a whole lot of time for her to correct these mistakes she's made in the past. Um, for her to do so now, I mean, she would have to find some high profile stage. There's no debates left. She's already done her media frenzy over the last week. I don't think she gave many convincing answers to sway the American people one way or another that she has a different plan and a different approach than Joe Biden. And let's face it, the American people have said over and over again by a margin of two to one that their personal finances are getting worse. If she's not going to change course, how are they going to have the optimism they need to pull the lever for her?